Okay, this is, um, I don't know if everybody can see this, but this is a, the perimeter restoration plan. So this is the MBS property. Um, the property line for MBS is here. And there's a common use area, which will be the perimeter road. But it's heavily eroded, severely eroded on these two ends and moderately eroded in the middle. Um, a lot of the work that Farley's done and the, and the, and the construction guys have done, putting the silt fences up and managing the water flow. But this is a key aspect for for the perimeter road. For inside the property, it's going to be controlled access, security, and the front of the road for other traffic if uh, for exits and use. Um, and we've followed the various terminal rules and regulations, minimum operating standards, on establishing demo, grub, shape, survey, paint, and scrap permits, all the work permits, internal work orders, uh, the certificate of acceptance job plan, and service, uh, service tariff and fee income. Um, I don't know if you can see, can you see this out here with the lights on? This is the back of the building facing west. Uh, here is the property and fence line. It will come uh, here to a gate. And so this will be where when you're servicing or delivering or picking up a building, you'll be able to go up into the property, into the security area. If you're tra traversing the property as a, as a perimeter road, just to pass the facility, exit or in, uh, it'll, it'll be back here outside of uh, yeah, so uh, here's a top view of the facility with the internal uh, uh, cells, uh, warehousing, sorting, and uh, loading and unloading. The doors are depicted here. Uh, and what you see in the colors is two different choices for, for parking of the trailers that are parking down there now because at uh, uh, some point soon we're going to be working on this side of the parking lot and park over here so we have to move them. So diagonal is a 30 degree angle. Uh, the, the, these yellow ones are back to back, and okay. I think diagonal is 20 and 24. Can I intercede with Yeah. Them? Go ahead. They're, they're, uh, we've all heard of 10 agreements, but probably the one that, that uh, uh, is least understood is called a common carrier access agreement. Um, Farley with Rhett has been working for well over a year now. With, we have two embedded common carriers at this facility right now that want to expand operations. But we have to because of the major construction work on the west side of the property and the, the sea wall. We have to move them around inside this space and, and park the trailers and house the trailers and hospitality services. You can see right there, that's what the joint looks like right now. We have to move them out of the back to get the south side of the construction. Now we're getting ready to move them back into the south side as it it's uh, through its grading and, and everything else. So that's what you're seeing here. This is covered under the concessionaire for, uh, through a, a vehicle called common carrier access agreements that are very extensive into uh, hospitality services and all the other things. We have ATM machines and all that, that stuff that we have to provide on the site for the drivers. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, examples of the, what you call it, Farley? Stormwater management. Stormwater management, it's an it's a early stage. What we've done is we've been able to stop all the water flow from the upper deck that ends up rolling down in through Stavages across the brownfield and into the river by controlling the water up on top and then, then building a, a kind of a containment ditch until we get the full stormwater system in. But we stopped all the water from our property by running it through silt fences and down into a pocket room. Yeah, that, that ditches up that's okay. Right. Yeah. So just it's at the bottom at the bottom of the hill. There's just a big area for water to, to build up without hitting the wall. Now, if you give me some idea on this property, because we now have since the Marine Terminal, uh, with the the bringing on board with farming and the engineers, we now have a stormwater management model, and it creates what we can estimate as being the flows through this this size facility. And the numbers, probably I'm not going to quote you, but I'll you, do you remember any of the numbers? Well, on a, on a moderate uh, storm event of two inches, we're producing flow, outflows of 5,000 gallons a minute. That's like a It's and, two barrels. And, and on, a typical, on a typical year, the, the, this relatively small site will be producing anywhere from 11 to 12 million gallons of, of, uh, of discharge per year. 
That's a few swimming pools yes. for you in the residential area. And this is when it rains, that, that sump down fills to the brim. And it's the size of a, 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 a mediocre swimming pool that you would put in your backyard. And that rain yesterday, that lasted 10 minutes, it filled that sump pond all the way to the brim. These, these, there's two and a half acres of road and 10 acres of land. It's, it is a, it's, it, it's not an understood uh, how much water the Appalachian region collects on just a simple water flow. And so the erosion slide that you had up there a minute ago, Oh, that? The road, you know, that one. So that's all. Yeah, poor old Weird Steel. Their property's long. It's we estimated it's down about San Luis Potosi <laughs> in the Gulf. That's their property back here. It's just washed away. Uh, and and the there's property significant back. property loss over the, the decades. Oh, this this system wasn't wasn't managed because it's an extensive underground system that was built in there back in the fifties. Architecture, but it's now since been discovered. And, and it is repaired. We don't know. They have to send in the robots and figure out what's underground and, and everything else before we alter. Uh, what we what we have seen so far is gives us pretty good optimism. Yeah, we can salvage a lot of obvious maintenance part of Now this well, is we've only got we've only got very small glimpses at it. Yeah. We'll, be, we'll be exploring that more in the near future. The other part, when this was designed long before, even myself was architect. This is when the sewers were run into the stormwater systems. And there's a leach, what's called a leach field that has to be removed, and a septic field that has to be removed from the site. In other words, Jimmy's, when he was Why would the leach field need to be? The, 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 the the septic, I understand, but the leach field itself, is not that just a dispersed the No, water? it's leaking. No, it's running. It's leaking into the stormwater, so we've got fecal contamination. Contamination in the leach field. Oh, That's oh, around oh, all yeah, the yeah, into the stormwater. Yeah. They covered it with asphalt. Yeah. And that was it. We, we still don't, not to, again, I don't want to get in front of the engineers, but it won't matter. I'll get in front of them anyway, but never mind. The, when they, the city water systems came in, was on the Birch Drive side. And what occurred is what we're assuming. We can't, we, we can't validate everything until they get all of the things and then we get Jimmy down there to run through the pipes. He fits very nicely in the pipes. <laughs> but when they switched it over onto the city's uh, sewer system, they, they did it on the Birch Drive side. We don't know exactly how they did that, but what they did when they did that is the rain collection systems for that addition to the building is actually now mixed in with the city's sewer system. All right, so so there's there's quite a bit of engineering that has to take place when we widen the road out on the, the first drive side. Yeah, that's we're, good. We're, we're going to be putting in front of the line. Farley's going to be putting in the, the road system that's going to take all the, the rain that's coming down that road now and it's flooding out the marine terminal. And it's going to go down underground into the new system. So there's there's quite a bit of engineering that has to take place on that north side. So so there, there won't be any impact to the city sewer system once you get rid of the leach field, correct? No, the, the, the handling of the, the city is going to be good, done through an intergovernmental agreement on the MS forwards. So because we have both the city and the state, because it's a state road, that is actually using the terminal system to disperse the water, and vice versa. Yep. You know, depending on how we separate, we've had the building off the grid, quote unquote now, for a month. Three weeks. Yeah, about three weeks. And so getting it off the grid was a monumental first step. The effects that we'll have, if, if anything, in a very layman's term, is instead of running our, our rain runoff from the road into the city system, we're going to re-divert that and put it into the storm system. So, you know, it's a little more active. Uh, the, but this is a major, major component of this whole restoration piece. As we saw with the superstructure, 
is financeable. This storm water is far from set until we get it all uncovered. Um, we do know this satellite imagery is the, uh, the river side of it is still intact in some condition. But, uh, but the Hatfield McCoy, there's a DMARC line down there before we open up the river side of it. We've got to contract the divers. We've got to get sonar on this side to figure out where the, the 200 foot pier goes. And they've got to do everything that we've got set up on the, the north side. But that whole side down here, we did not sonar and we did not put divers on this side to recover this side of the sea. This is the main terminal B C wall at 200 foot section. This is a slide. There's also an easement that runs from. It's a Signo National Steel easement that runs from the property up here for stormwater and industrial water that crop. So there was actually three pools, retention ponds, that'll get grubbed again. So that means the trees never gets out of the way, so they can see what's there. And then from that easement down here, and then there's the sea wall. So that access and there's also intakes in that intakes. come back up the hill for the industrial water support, include fire suppression. And so it is a, a utility. We're not treating this as a standard utility because of tax purposes, but it will have it'll have extensive work done on that to do that thing. Williams needs water from the river. I think it's further. Well, not from this one, that's on the other side. 